slide you today, today. And at this time, I'll turn over to Mr. Decker and we can go to do some guests. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. And like Mr. Lewis was saying, you guys do look good. We do appreciate it. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today. It's an exciting day for us here at Alive County High. Uh, this is a big deal for us. And, and so we're really excited about this opportunity, as we discussed yesterday. Uh, you know, we've got some guests with us. Uh, we've got our state representative, Tommy Thompson. Uh, he's not going to be speaking today, but I wanted to recognize him. Uh, and our first speaker, our first guest speaker, is the uh, Director of Innovation at the uh, Kentucky Do uh, Department of Education. Uh, he, was, he attended college, uh, Berea College, in the University of Kentucky. And at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, David Cook. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a very important day. The Kentucky Department of Education is very excited to be partnering with the Kentucky Governor Agency on this very important initiative, and we are very excited to be here in the high school. We're not going to be talking about the present here today. We're here today to talk about the future. Your future. Our future. Kentucky's future. We're going to throw some statistics out at you. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, 90% of the fastest growing jobs in America require at least two years of post-secondary education. That's technical college, community college, or affordable institution, which we have represented all the way around the world. By 2018, <clears throat> it's predicted that 63% of all jobs, not just the high, not just the ones that are the fastest growing, but all jobs are going to require the same requirement. At least two years of training, whether that's a tech, community, technical college, or a four year institution at the high school. And a recent study has shown that the average annual salary of someone who just has a high school diploma is under $10,000. Those are pretty sobering statistics. And what it says is that if Kentucky's economy is going to stay competitive and viable, our workforce, that's you, must be prepared to fill those high-paying, knowledge-based jobs that I mentioned in that first statistic. Recognizing this, Representative Thompson and the other members of the General Assembly passed in 2009 a pretty extensive piece of legislation. We call it Senate Bill 1, lovingly. But I call it the College and Career Readiness Act. Because that's what it was all about. It was about ensuring that every single one of you in this room graduated from high school ready for college and career. Every one of you. To paraphrase a, a very, very famous quote by Dr. Martin Luther King, do you have a dream today? Do every one of you sitting in these chairs know what's going to happen the day after graduation? The months after graduation? You know, we always like to talk about people asking for the little kids. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I'm asking you that today. What do you want to be next year? The next year? The next year? Do you have a thought about that? Have you thought about that? Many of you have. Some of you probably haven't taken as much time to think about it. But you all have aspirations. And today is about aspirations. You all have something that you've always loved. You've always had a passion about. Today is about thinking about what you need to do to make that passion and your aspiration a reality. Do you know what it's going to take, training-wise, education-wise, to make that dream come true. These folks around here at the top are going to talk to you about that today. We're going to sit at your tables today and talk with folks about financial aid, about admissions, about the businesses in your community and in this area of the state and what they need you to be able to do to be employed by them. That's what today is all about. 
It's not an end. Graduation next May or June, we hope May, is not an end. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of your life. It's the beginning of what's going to happen for the rest of your life. It all starts with the thing we implemented a long time ago in Kentucky called the Individual Graduation Plan. Individual learning plan. I, I used to call it the Individual Graduation Plan. That's how long I've been in the you guys know about the IOP? Raise your hand if you know about the IOP. I'm guessing that many or most of you know about the IOP because it's something every year that you have to do. You have to open it. It's required. You have to do some things in it. But the most of you know the wealth of resource that the IOP provides to you. I think it's interesting that the vendor for the IOP is called Career Cruiser. That's what the IOP does for you. It provides you with so many resources and opportunities to think about what your career pathway is and how you get there. It, you can search for careers. You can figure out which ones match your interests and your skills. Because you all have, as I said, a passion and interest. And somewhere out there is a career you may not even have thought of yet today. That, that is very good to you. You can explore what post-secondary requirements are needed to make that career happen. And you can connect with folks like the College Higher Education, Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority here today to figure out what it's going to cost to make that career really happen. And figure out where the scholarships are and where the financial aid is. Just can't say enough about how you can effectively use from today until you graduate the individual learning. Don't just let it be something that you have to do. Go out there and, and, and really use it to make your career dream a reality. It doesn't stop there, though. In 2011, the Kentucky Department of Education and the Department of Workforce Development launched Operation Preparation. How many of you all remember as sophomores during Operation Preparation? Anybody? A couple of kids raised their hands. So Operation Preparation is a career advising opportunity where public um, community members from, from the area in Ohio County come into the schools and help eighth graders and sophomores figure out things about their, their career goals and how to effectively use an IOP. So it connects very closely with the IOP. I know it's past it for you all, but folks in your schools that are freshmen and sophomores and eighth graders at the middle school. Can, can benefit greatly next spring in March when we do operation preparation again. I hope that that becomes a very important part of their career plan and exploration. And while I know operation preparation is passed for you all, this event today brings us to the natural extension of operation preparation. Close the deal. Operation preparation laid the groundwork for you to graduate college or career ready. Close the deal provides the support you need to make sure that that becomes a reality. You're going to provide, you're going to be provided with a wealth of information today. And as I've seen in other close the deals, what I hope you come away with, and I think you will. Those of you who didn't, who that aspiration didn't seem real, it's going to be real after today. Those of you who had already seen real, maybe you're even further into it. Maybe you're even deeper into that dream, and you think the dream can even get bigger. As I said when I started, the Kentucky Department of Education is thrilled to be here today and be partnering with Lieutenant Governor Anderson on this very important program. My colleague Amy Patterson is here, who's one of the IOP folks, so you can, you can talk to her later. Enjoy your day. But most importantly, Find the dream and keep the dream alive. Every one of you in this room can go on to post-secondary education, can go on to that dream. You just have to believe that you can. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next speaker, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to hear him speak about both of them. Thank you, the original star of this in Louisville as the mayor. And uh, he has a strong passion for the success of all students, not only in Ohio County high school students, but the students of the Commonwealth. And I think you're going to enjoy listening to him at this time with Lieutenant Governor Gary Evans.
Good morning, Eagles. No, no. Come on. Good morning, Eagles. Good morning. All right, I'm coming out onto the floor. Because I'm going to talk to you up close in person. You know, this is your day. This is your day. It's up to you to take advantage of it. We're going to be here all morning so that you have an opportunity to understand what's there available for you and the, the real nitty-gritty of what you need to know to get into college, to get financial aid to assist you in college, and then you've got some community leaders who are here today to talk to you about you've got to do more than a high school degree if you're going to come work for us. We have got to have more skills and more education than a high school degree if you're going to work for our business. So that's what the morning is going to be about. Why are we here? How did we get here? We got here because people in this community care about you. We got here because Tommy Thompson, your, your state representative from Franklin, he cares about you enough that he's here to be a part of this morning session. Your county judge is with us today. He cares enough about you so that you can be here. And he wanted to be sure that you understood. He understands the importance. Mayor Parker, the Mayor Beaver Dam, they understand the importance of what you mean for the future of this community. And so they're here. The bottom line is, we're here because we care. But you know the old adage about you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, this is your time to get as much of the water as you want. Because this is your time to ask the questions, the specific questions, that have been bothering you in terms of what do I do next. Now, we've got colleges and universities from all over this state that are here today to visit with you. Some of them came early, and they're sitting at the tables to talk about admission. But the reality is, is that if you get the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville, Western Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky, you get Berea, you get Kentucky Wesleyan, you get uh, Lindsey Wilson, you get Campbellsville University, they're all taking it Spalding University, you get Sullivan School of, of Culinary Arts, they're all here to answer questions. You got a question about what you want to do? You got a question about what it takes to what you want to do? You're going to have a chance at the conclusion of the tables, tabletops, to go up and visit. We've got some military folks that are here, the Army, the Marines. We've got some technology people here, the Nashville Diesel and Technology School. The bottom line is, is that everybody's here that needs to be here to answer your questions. To answer your question, Murray is here. I think I said that. We've got the, the two uh, community and technical colleges. Both the one in Madisonville as well as the one in Owensboro are both here. To answer your questions. So it's your day. You don't want to take advantage of it? You're making a big, big mistake. Because you're never going to have all of this strength and power in one room that's dedicated to you. That's all we're here for. Dedicated to you. The program is very simple. Everybody in this row, from, from here all the way back, are going to be talking to people at the beginning about how do you finance going to college. In Kentucky, higher education assistance authority. That's the keys crowd, you know. Last year, your school averaged about $950 a piece, each one of your seniors last year, in terms of their keys money. You got the best ACT scores this school has ever seen. You're going to do at least that well, if not better. But these folks at this table, at these tables, will talk to you about financial aid. They'll talk to you about your keys money. They'll talk to you about opportunities to get financial assistance. There's work-study programs at universities. There's opportunities to work full-time at the school and get financial aid to go to school. There's opportunities to work off the campus. There's opportunities for low-interest low loans. There's opportunities for scholarships. To give you a perfect example, I went to a school last year 
The year before we got there, the senior class generated about $200,000 in scholarships. The next year, the group that I visited with got over a million and a half dollars in scholarships. Now, how did that happen? It happened because the people that, when they sat at this row of tables, learned how important it was to fill out the FAFSA forms. Those are the forms that you would have to fill out to get financial aid. In fact, the school that I'm referencing, 98% of high school seniors filled out that financial aid form. You fill the form out to be able to get awarded any financial aid. You've got to fill the form out. So if we can get you to be thinking just that today, we can move the ball down the court. On the field, I guess it's going to football. Field. Okay. So you'll have about 20 minutes or so to interact with folks in this row of tables dealing with the issue of how can I afford to go to college? I'm here to tell you, you can't afford not to go to college. That's a double negative for any of you English majors. You can't afford not to go to college. And we're going to show you ways to be able to do that. This row of tables are made up of admissions officers. At each one of these tables, you're going to find an individual from one of the colleges and universities that you'll visit with at the end of the tabletop session. And you can talk to them about college life. You can talk to them about how you go through admission. Not just their college, although they'll be more than happy to talk to you about their college or university, but they'll also be able to answer questions about college life and college admission at other universities and colleges. And then, over on this side, you're going to have some of your citizen businessmen and women Financial people with financial backgrounds, like state police officer, thank you, sir. Talk about uh, what it takes. You can't even be a, you can't be a state police officer without going to a high school degree. I don't know how to make, I don't mean to say that in a derogatory way, but that is what you need to have more education to be a police officer. We've got people in financial aid, we've got lawyers, we've got businessmen and women, they'll be able to talk to you about the fact that if you want to ever work in their area of business, you're going to need more than a high school diploma. Now, what are we talking about in terms of high school? What, and, and by the way, what will happen is every 20 minutes, uh, the superintendent or the principal will ring a bell or say it's time, or the counselor just helps, and the, you won't move, but the individual who is sitting at your table will move. So the financial person will move to this table, the education uh, admissions person will move to this table, and the business person will move to that table. So by the time we do the whole rotation, you'll have an opportunity to interact with finance, how do I get into college, how do I pay for college, admissions, how do I get into college, what's going to be expected of me, and business, learn about the fact that a high school diploma just doesn't get it any longer. Now, when I said at the end of the tabletops, you're going to visit with all these, we've got almost 25 different colleges, universities, tech schools, plus the military, the Marines, and the Army. You know, everybody doesn't have to have a PhD. Everybody doesn't have to go on to medical school. Everybody doesn't have to go on to law school. In fact, we probably have too many lawyers. I say that as a lawyer. Um, everybody doesn't have to go to a four-year college. If you want to go to a four-year college, if you want to go to a four-year university, that's great. And we've got big schools with lots of students, like UK, UofL, Western, Merck. We've got smaller schools, like Maria, that give you a four-year college degree. We've got Campbellsville, we've got Lindsey Wilson, we've got Gresham. We've got, we've, got, we've got smaller universities to give you a four-year college education. But even that's not necessary. You've got two of the finest community and technical colleges in this commonwealth within driving distance from where we sit right now. And if you choose to not want to go for a four-year degree, or at least to begin your four-year degree at a community college, you've got two wonderful ones to choose from. And what have we done at the state level, thanks to Tommy Thompson and his, his colleagues? 
Every academic credit that you receive at the community college will transfer to any of the public universities. So, if you're a little hesitant about going the first year to a major university or to a small college, and you want to start to take your English class, and your basic history class, and those kinds of basic requirements, you can do it. All those credits will transfer. But let's say academics are not your thing. You say, you know, I really, I, I'm working right now at McDonald's, or I got a minimum wage job, and I'm making a lot of money, man. I just bought a car. I mean, how great is that? I got a car. And I'm working, I'm pulling put, put in seven fifty, eight dollars an hour. I got a car. You know, I'm set. Yeah, au contraire. That's about as far as you're going to get if you stay with that kind of mindset. So now all of a sudden, the community and technical colleges step up and say, well, maybe you might want to go into to, uh, uh, plumbing. I don't know how many of you all have ever had a plumber come to your home to fix something. But based on what I paid the last time they fixed something in my house on an hourly basis, you can make a lot of money as a plumber, as an electrician, as a welder. I mean, they are paying welders 30-something dollars an hour plus benefits. You can go into IT, you can take allied health, you can go into nursing. You can do all that with a two-year degree or a six-month or one-year certificate, all at your community and technical college. You're going to have a school here that focuses on culinary. There's several universities that have that. You want to go into being a chef, bakery chef, or a real chef, whatever that is, a chef chef. All of that's available. But, you see where I'm going with this, all of what I just said to you takes more than a high school degree. You don't want to walk across this stage and shake the hand of your principal and the superintendent and get your high school diploma and think that it's over. It's just beginning. Just beginning. You don't want to wake up five years from now working at that same $89 an hour job, driving that car that you were able to buy, and wonder to yourself, you know, I remember that close the deal program Gosh, I wish I had listened. Or I wish I had asked this question. Or I had no idea that there was this financial aid available to me if I wanted to get a certificate, if I wanted to be in the carpentry, or I wanted to be a welder, or I wanted to be an electrician, or I wanted to go on for a four-year university and beyond to be an engineer. Gosh, we need engineers. You can get an engineering program at the community college level and then go on to four-year engineering programs at UK or UL. All of that to do with but lots of programs. The bottom line is, this is your time. This is your time. If you finish lunch and you go back to your classroom after the college visits, and you have, and you still have a question, if you finish here and you still have a question that has not been answered, you made a mistake. Because everybody who can, every question that you can ask about finances, about the workplace, and about getting into college. Those people are in this room ready to engage with you. So, time is yours. We hope you take advantage of it. I guarantee you, with this, with this outstanding and academic group as we have in this gymnasium right now, and the young men and women who look so professional in the way that you present yourself today, I know you guys and gals are going to get it. I know you're going to ask the tough questions if they're tough, or the easy questions. Just ask and get the answers. So by the end of the day, you go home to your folks. You can say what you did. You can tell them what you learned. You can begin to talk about filling out those financial aid forms, tax forms. You can understand what this felt so when she starts beating on you in the hallway. You got to get your forms in. You got to get your applications in. Because once we leave here today, it's on you, it's on your counselor, your principal, and your faculty to ensure that you take that next step. And, you know, with the military over here, I guess the one thing I didn't mention is that those who wish to go into the military, I had an opportunity to serve for a couple of years. Another great learning experience, education opportunities while you get paid and while you serve your country. So 
Boy, have you got a room full of quality people who are ready to spend their time with you answering questions. I wish you the best. I'm going to stick around and be a part. Um, and I look forward to hearing great things about the percentage of, of, of your high school class that goes to college and the financial aid, the financial awards that you receive, which will probably top anything that's happened here at Ohio County High School. Congratulations on being seniors. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. I think we do better now. Let's give a little standing ovation. Give it up this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to uh, start the first session.